Hello and welcome to another edition of the Miami Sports Report. My name is Sean Fowler and we have another hot week of Miami sports news cooking up over in the oven. Seeing as this is our Thanksgiving edition, I thought it'd be appropriate to report from here, my kitchen. First of all, I hope all of you had the happiest of Thanksgivings or just a great Thursday. But the holiday is past, the feast is digested, and we've got some Miami sports news to report on. So, let's get back to work. The Dolphins entered Thanksgiving week thankful for a 5-5 five five record that kept them in the thick of the AFC playoff hunt. They were also thankful to be back home, facing a Panthers team that they were thankful beat the Jets last week. Let's try to stop saying thankful. No promises, though. The Panthers started the scoring after a strong punt return by former Dolphin Ted Ginn Jr. to the Miami 42-yard line. The defense only allowed the Panthers to move the ball eight yards, but that was enough for Graham Gano, who kicked a 52-yard field goal and gave Carolina a 3-0 lead. But the Dolphins would respond on the next drive. Starting from their 23, the Finns picked up a first down, and then on second and seven, they... No, wait, <laughs> stop. There, there, this has got to be a misprint. Uh, I'm very sorry, folks. There seems to be just a, a slight misprint in the game log here. It says... <laughs> It says that Ryan Tannehill threw a 53-yard touchdown pass to Mike Wallace. But we all know that doesn't happen this season. <laughs> Too funny. Okay, so what obviously happened is that Tannehill threw a 5-yard check down and then... Oh, um, um, excuse me for a second. The, the bread seems to be ringing. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about this. Hang on just a second. Uh, hello? Oh, great. Actually, I was just about to call you. As it turns out, there's a mistake in the... Wait, what? What? He did? Yes, folks, the Dolphins actually managed a deep touchdown pass to Mike Wallace. 53 yards, giving the Finns a 7-3 lead. What's more, on the next drive in the second quarter, Tannehill found Wallace again deep downfield. This, a 57-yard pass. But that only got them to the 22, and they were unable to get it in the end zone. Caleb Sturgis hit a 32-yard field goal, extending Miami's lead to 10-3. Later in the second, the Finns would push that lead further out. The Dolphins would start at their 43-yard line and move moderately up to Carolina's 29. Sturgis hits his second at 47-yarder to make the lead 13-3 Miami. And Miami would push that lead out a little more just before halftime. The Dolphins picked off Cam Newton on the first play of the next drive, returning it to the Carolina 11. Unfortunately, when a touchdown might have really put the game away, even at halftime, the Finns could not break past the five-yard line. Sturgis hit his third field goal, making it 16-3. But the Panthers snuck in a score just before halftime. Taking the ball at their own 20 with just one minute and one second left, the Panthers still drove into long field goal range. Gano hit from 46 yards, sending the game to halftime at 16-6. The Panthers would make it a game again with a long drive to start the third quarter. Carolina combined shotgun and no huddle to tire the Finns D and went on a 14-play drive covering 84 yards. Newton took it in himself, running for five yards and the score, 16-13 Finns. After a back-and-forth scoreless period for most of the fourth quarter, the Panthers took the ball with four minutes left, knowing that they needed at least a field goal to tie. Their drive from their own 20 chewed up most of what was left of the game. The Dolphins thought they had the Panthers stopped, facing a fourth and 10 on their own 20-yard line. But Newton hit Smith for a 19-yard first down. And with just 46 seconds left, Newton hit Greg Olson for a one-yard touchdown pass. The Dolphins made one last valiant try, and Tannehill very nearly hit Wallace again deep for a game-winning score. But Tannehill was sacked on 3rd and 10, and time ran out. The Finns lose a disappointing game, 20-16. to This one definitely hurts. The Finns were a playoff team, a world-beater. 
in the first half. The offense was moving the ball and the defense was dominating. I mean, heck, they were using Mike Wallace for what he was signed for, catching long passes and touchdowns. But they would collapse in the second half. The offense was suddenly non-existent and the defense was the one giving up long drives. The good news is that somehow this Dolphin team still has everything in front of them. The Jets lost again, and there are now nine AFC teams within two games of the final playoff spot. Baltimore currently holds it at 6-6 six six, thanks to a Thanksgiving Day win over the Steelers. But there sit the Dolphins at 5-6 just a half game back. You know another team that's 5-6? The New York Jets. Speaking of the Jets, that's where Miami is today in what becomes a critical AFC playoff matchup. The game is today, December 1st, 1 p.m. on CBS. I think all of Miami is thank, uh, grateful for the Miami Heat. After a bit of a rough start, the Heat were on a six-game winning streak heading into this week's games. So let's dig into a Heat basketball feast. We start off with a bit of a rare happening as the Heat face the Magic for the second time in as many games. Dwayne Wade looks recovered after his recent rest, leading the Heat with 27 points. Chris Bosh scored 15 for the Heat, but the Magic, who got back Glenn Davis, put up a much stronger fight. The Heat needed all 22 of LeBron James' points, including this game-winning shot in the final seconds. The Heat beat the Magic again, this time 101-99. After that, the Heat hosted something that causes heat, the Suns. But this time, it was the Heat burning the Suns. James had one of his nights scoring 35 points. Wade looked strong again, this time with 21 points. Off the bench, Ray Allen poured in 17 points. And former son Michael Beasley added 8. The Heat win easily, 107 to 92. The Heat then went on the road to face the Cavs, who have this idea of luring back LeBron James. Good luck with that. Anyway, LeBron did look comfortable back home in Ohio, scoring 28 points along with 8 rebounds and assists. Wade chipped in with 22 points. Michael Beasley, not pictured, scored 17 off the bench. 9 straight for the Heat, who win 95-84. to Whew! Well, um, the Heat are on fire. And you know what? We don't need any water, why not just let them burn? Let's take a look at the Heat's upcoming games. The Heat are at home for their next two, hosting the Bobcats tonight at 6 p.m. And Tuesday, they'll host the Pistons at 7.30 p.m. Then Thursday, the Heat start a four-game central road trip, heading to Chicago, game time, 9.30. The Panthers have been, um, pleased to see an uptick in play as of late. They have improved from bad to at least average. It's a light slate for the Panthers this week, just two games to tell you about, so let's get to it. The week started with the Panthers hosting the Philadelphia Flyers. After a scoreless first period, the second belonged to the Panthers' Sean Bergenheim, and as a fellow Sean, that pleases me. He scored his first goal of the season early in the second, and followed it with his second goal late in the period. The Flyers drew back to within one in the third, but Eric Gudbranson scored his first goal late in the third to put things away. The Panthers get a win, three to one. Things did not go so well the night before Thanksgiving as the Cats hosted the Rangers. The Rangers scored once in the first, once in the second, and the first goal of the third. The Panthers would rally back with Scotty Upshaw scoring his fifth, and Nick Bugstad scoring his third. But the Rangers scored late in the third on the power play, which I guess makes them Power Rangers, <laughs> and put things away with an empty net goal. The Panthers fall 5-2. to two. This doesn't look quite done. Is that a bit more time? Well, we had a slight holiday delay, so we had to wake the old informative graphic up from a holiday nap. The Panthers managed to sneak in one more game on Saturday hosting the Penguins. So, let's take a look. <clears throat> Graphic. Graphic! I said, let's take a look. It 
It's going to be another quiet week for the Panthers, who will be hosting a couple of Canadian teams. On Tuesday, the Panthers will host the Ottawa Senators at 7.30. And on Thursday, the Panthers will host the Winnipeg Jets, also at 7.30. All right, time for the main course. You guys ready? For our featured story this week, I'm going to talk about soccer in Miami. And no, this time I'm afraid I am not kidding. Let me take a step back from my journalist spot for a second and talk to you about this as a blogger. There are three professional sports teams in Miami in action right now, and I already talk about all of them. The Marlins really are not doing anything right now. It's just not hot stove time yet. I suppose I could talk about Richie Incognito agreeing to extend his suspension. But as I said when I covered that story the first time, it's really not a story that I want to talk about right now. So other than that, the major sports story going on in Miami right now is soccer. I mean, I covered a lacrosse story, though I do love talking about new teams. So you know I'm looking. <clears throat> anyway, here's an update on the Fighting Beckhams. It does appear that we're getting rather close to an announcement on a new franchise. A Miami Herald report quotes the deputy mayor of Miami-Dade County as saying that Beckham's group has asked about 25 acres on Dodge Island. Dodge Island, which is pictured here, is the main home of the Port of Miami. However, the southwest corner of the island has always been a bit underdeveloped. The city and county have wanted to more develop the area, but haven't had the money to do so. Beckham's group is apparently planning a seaside stadium with beautiful views of downtown Miami, the Atlantic Ocean, and perhaps even cruise ships pulling into port. Now, the county has affirmed that they will not be providing direct financial assistance to Beckham's group on a new stadium. However, the county could help by providing a sweet lease deal or simply giving Beckham the land, provided that he agrees to develop it more than just a stadium. And Beckham has already said that he's perhaps thinking of hotels and other entertainment nearby in addition to the stadium. There are some challenges to this idea. There's really only one main road leading to the island, which could make traffic an issue. It's also just within a couple of blocks of the Heat's American Airlines Arena, and there is a small overlap between the two seasons. Parking, as usual in downtown Miami, could also be there. Now, the city and county have wanted to encourage the use of public transportation in downtown Miami, so they could help out by providing buses and water taxis. Beckham was on the interview circuit in London last night and says that his effort is really close and he expects to make an announcement by the end of the year. And that's going to just about wrap things up for this Thanksgiving edition of the Miami Sports Report. And I truly hope that you and yours had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know we've got a bad Marlins, a mediocre Panthers, and an average Dolphins to go along with our three-peat seeking heat. But let's take a moment to be thankful, yes, one more time, that our beautiful area of the country has four professional sports teams to follow and that we get professional sports pretty much all year round. Let's have a social media feast. Enjoy. Our first course is a little bit of YouTube. Like this video, leave us a comment below and subscribe to the channel. Yum. Second course is Facebook. Search for the Miami Sports Report, like the page and share our posts. Mm -mm. And the third course is Twitter. You are looking for at Miami Sports Net. Follow us and retweet our tweets. Whew, boy, that was good. I am stuffed. I tell you what, I'm going to go sleep off that social media feast. You guys stay tuned for Bumbles and Bumbles, our bloopers segment. And watch out for Almost Gaming, but definitely keep your eyes open for the next Almost Interesting. I'm going to take you through my preparation of the Thanksgiving feast from grocery store all the way through to the plate. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, go Miami! I mean, heck, they were using Mike Wallace for uh, moving the ball, which is what I was supposed to say. Somehow... Everything still sits in front of this Miami Dolphins team. That's where Miami's is. That's that's. Where. It's another quiet week for the Panthers, who will be facing uh, the Marlins. It's just not hot stove time yet. I forgot the rest. Beckham's group has asked about a. Uh, asked him about the. Uh,
it does appear that we're getting rather close to an announcement on a new franchise. That's going to just about wrap it up for this edition of the Miami Sports Report. And I do truly hope that you and 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 even you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. But let's take a moment to be thankful. Yes, one more time. That noises happen in the living room because of cats. We should try to be thankful for the interruptions of our cats. Because if we didn't have interruptions from our cats, we would all be far too sane. You stay tuned for Bumbles and Fumbles, our blooper segment, of which I'm going to add this take to. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for Bumbles and Fumbles, which I'm adding this to. Oh, hi. My name is Christoph Christofferson, and welcome to Sticky Record Button. We are making a delicious Sticky Record Button souffle today. Uh, it's, it's right here. Um, it's invisible, but that's because this is a blooper, thanks to the Sticky Record Button. So we're just going to put that in the oven, just like that. We're going to set it for, I think, about 13,000 degrees, and uh, we're going to set this timer for forever and just uh, burn it up to a crisp. What do you say?